Have you ever worked with pipelines in the Power Platform and have you used Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions? You probably know that it's a lot of work to set them up. Nowadays, there's a feature in the Power Platform called Pipelines for Power Platform, and that is an in-product version of Pipelines, and it's really easy to use. And in this episode, Prabhat is here to talk all about us. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Low-Code Revolution. Today, we have a very special episode about pipelines for Power Platform. And not just normal pipelines that you already know from Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions, but we are going to talk about the in-product pipelines that recently got introduced. And to tell us all about that, we have a very special guest, and that's Prabhat. Hi, Prabhat. Can you please introduce yourself? Hey. Greeting everyone. I'm Prabhat Pandey, and I'm engineering manager in the Power Platform Pipelines team. And today I'm here to talk about all the cool, cool capabilities of Power Platform Pipelines. Well, we're really happy to have you. And um, yeah, the Power Platform Pipelines, they are something really new. And I, I know I tried it already. I really like it. Uh, but a lot of people already have created pipelines for Azure DevOps and GitHub Actions. Um, but the Power Platform pipelines are something completely different, right? They are more inside of the product. It's more of a seamless in experience, right? Absolutely. So uh, let me give you some overview uh, through the slide deck, and then we will have the live demo in action. Great. OK, so let's talk about the goals here. Like We are going to democratize ALM uh, for the citizen developer. That's the main goal of pipelines. And as you all know, uh, it's a very ELM is very complex. So we are going to simplify and abstract out all the complexities of ELM through the pipelines offering. And uh, last but very, very important, full governance and visibility of all the ELM chains. So more control, more, vis more visibility, and getting things done faster and easier. That's the goal of pipelines. And let me share a few steps that you need to get started with your pipeline setup. So first you need pipelines host. Uh, generally, it should be a dedicated production type uh, environment. And then of course you need a development environment where you are going to deploy. Uh, sometimes it's like source, your development environment, your test environment, and then production environment. So these are the four things needed to set up your pipelines. So these are four different environments that you need. And what is normally the best practice for the pipelines host? Because I know a lot of people already have uh, multiple environments available. So they, they probably have a dev test and production environment, but they might also have an environment where they have the uh, Center of Excellence starter kit installed. Can they reuse that environment as well for the, for the pipelines host, for instance? Technically, yes, but I would recommend to have a dedicated pipelines host because this would be very, very contained environment where you don't want others to be having extra access and uh, messing up with your pipeline setup. Okay, great. Okay, so let me share how to get started here. Uh, the first thing, uh, a pipeline solution package, it's not installed everywhere, so identify your project host and then install this solution package. Uh, once you have the solution package, you have full capability of pipelines in your host. And then next step is configure the pipelines in the host. Uh, generally, it's telling that, hey, uh, what is my pipeline name? Uh, what are my dev environment? What are my test environment? And what are the production environments that I'm going to deploy? And grant access to uh, makers and uh, also grant access to uh, uh, admins if you want to have more admins configuring your pipelines. And then just like watch your deployment progress and history, it's as simple. Sounds really cool. Sure. So, so, can you, do you have a demo for it? Yeah, yeah. So let me uh, quickly share here like what that uh, uh, environment setup looks like. So first you need to identify in, uh, uh, your environments and plan a little bit here. So uh, if you go to your uh, uh, Power Platform Admin Center, uh, look into all the environments here. So for example, here you will see I have control so host, my uh, uh, pipelines host. Uh, 
designated here. And then I have two environment here, Contoso Pipelines Dev and Contoso Sales uh, uh, Development Environment. And then I have QA and Prod Type. You will also notice their environment type here, both Contoso Host, my pipeline host is production, and of course, uh, Sales Prod is production here. Uh, another thing that you will notice here is uh, these uh, regions here, Pipelines is currently supported only in the same region because of regulatory regions and other considerations that we have. So once you have identified your environment, uh, I would suggest you to uh, note down their environment ID and uh, in a table like this because that will help you during setup stage. And I'm going to use this information when I set up my pipelines. So let's jump into the real configuration. We starting with a blank pipeline and see how that goes. All right. So I'm here in uh, pipelines applications that you see here. And uh, this is my dashboard, which talks about, hey, how many pipelines I have, what, how the deployments are going on, and what are the success and failures. So you see this information because already I have few pipelines. So, But here, we are going to set up a totally brand new pipeline. So let's start here. Uh, but before we go, let's talk about the environments. Do I have all the environments needed here? So here, you will notice that few environments are already configured. So that's good. Uh, Control so cells, dev, QA, and prod. But I want to have another uh, uh, development environment added as well. So let me add a environment over here. And uh, I have already copied this information. So generally, it's if you have the same name of environment here uh, that you have in the PPAC admin center, it's much easier. And I'm going to choose this as a development environment. And let me copy the environment ID that I want to set up here. All right, it's that simple. So now what's happening here behind the scene, you will see it's in the pending status. Uh, it's getting validated that, hey, this ID is valid. Uh, this environment also has uh, uh, the database there and it's in the same region. So these are like a bunch of uh, validation that happens in the back end. Now is the time to go to the pipelines and start setting up. So let me create a brand new pipeline here. Let me share my description. It could be anything. And let's save it. Now, there are two additional steps that I have to do to uh, uh, set up this pipeline properly. So let's aid the environments over here. So uh, as we were talking about, we have few environments already. So there is this Contoso Pipelines dev. This was the environment we just added. So let me set up this. And this is also why we used a different type, right? There's like a, a development type and a production type, or that, a target type, sorry. That's right, yes. Yeah. And I will set up one more uh, sales dev. So this means, there are two places this pipeline would be available for deployment. So my development environments are set up. Now let's talk about the real pipeline here, deployment stage, where I'm going to deploy payload, in this case, solution. So generally it's a, hey, I have QA, UAT, and then uh, our target environment. So I'll, since already we have these two environments that you have seen before, the QA and the production, so I'm going to use these in my pipeline I just created. So let me create new deployment stage. And since this is the first stage here, we don't need to have previous stage for chaining, but uh, the target we are going to have production one from QA. So 
let's let's talk about like let's share here the QA environment that we have, and then we will tie this with the the production one. So I have this QA environment set up here. Let's set up the prod one. And in this case, since we have to do the chaining, let's set up it with the QA environment. And this will help because then um, you will see like a flow, right? Where you have first the development, then the QA, and then the production environment. That's right. And that's the reason we have to uh, do this type of setup here. And you can have multiple here. This is just for demonstration, just two. Generally, two or three uh, environment you will have in pipelines. That's it. Uh, your pipeline is set up and it's ready for deployment. So now let's go to our development environment. In this case, it's Contoso pipeline dev uh, that we talked about before. So uh, there are many uh, solutions. One of the solution uh, for this purpose, for this demo purpose we have is event registration. So let's open this solution and see uh, what we have here. Uh, this is like very simple solution. Uh, we used uh, Figma to app generation technology to create one Canvas application where uh, you can register something. Uh, one thing that you will notice in this solution, there is this pipeline icon. And this is the place that will allow you to deploy from QA to prod. Uh, there are many other pipelines pipelines, but only this awesome pipeline is shown because that's where we have configured this development environment in the pipeline. So I have the solution. There are nothing deployed here in QAR prod. So let me try to deploy something in my QA environment. So there will be some pre-validation steps and uh, what's happening uh, during that time is uh, there are special purpose APIs. They are going and talking to the target system and uh, are taking the current payload and validating that, hey, do I have all the dependencies right? Uh, do I have the right versions there? And is there any issue that we have to check uh, before, before going further in the step? And this reduces a lot of errors that we see uh, during various ALM operations. So at yeah. this point, we are ready. So, we can so in this case, uh, we only use the Canvas app, right? But if you would use, uh, for instance, connection references, and you would use environment variables, you would also see them here, right? That's right. right. So I have different payload where all those things are there. Uh, in this case, we don't have. But connection references, variables, and this is solution. So it can be used with uh, Power Virtual Agent, Power Automate. Uh, anything which is part of the solution, uh, model app, canvas app, mm -hmm. uh, environment variables, they are all taken care of as part of the deployment. And connection references and the environment variable, you will get extra screen where you can provide the information just before deployment. So it makes that life much, much easier. Yeah, I think everybody who already created a pipeline in the, in the past, they probably know how wrong it can go when you don't have the right connection references etc so this is a really helpful uh, helpful addition with that uh, configuration in the pipelines absolutely and totally agree it's very very difficult once you have deployed and going there in that your deployed environment and figuring out what those things are you need to set up before your application can run yeah. so at this time deployment is going on in the back end and you can go to run history and see what's going on here. Uh, uh, as a maker, uh, often it's very useful to see what's happening here. And uh, while, while this activity is happening, uh, as an admin, uh, if someone has that level of access, they can also go to run history and see what's happening. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, this is the deployment, uh, which is in progress at this time. And uh, it's telling that, hey, what's happening behind the scene, as you see, uh, you will see all the steps which are happening over there are also recorded. So you will get different 
uh, uh, visibility over here. So let's go back here and see what's happening. Uh, the deployment is still going on. Depending on the size of the solution and uh, 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 like what all you have over there, it might take from few minutes to uh, uh, some more time. So, uh, but in, interesting part is a lot of heavy lifting is happening behind the scene here. And uh, anything that you are deploying as part of that payload, like your deployment setting, all that information is recorded. So you have complete visibility. And uh, you, you, you will get all the run history here, uh, uh, previously that you have started, as well as if you can go to the pipelines and within the pipeline context as well, you can see, hey, what my run history uh, looks like here. Uh, so depending on uh, what you have deployed, uh, 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 past history and all, all these informations are available here. So for example, in this case, hey, this deployment has started, uh, of course, like it has different color. It will also tell you what has failed here. And this is one place where you will see history, not just for this particular pipeline. Of course, that would be at the top and you can filter it, but you will see other history as well. Often it's very useful uh, to get a complete overview of what's going on uh, different things here. Really helpful this. Absolutely. And another part, which is also very, very uh, uh, powerful is you can go to this visualize uh, button and all the runs which are happening or has happened, you will see a very nice visuals, uh, a complete insights of everything that, hey, what my failure rate looks like, what type of solutions have uh, deployed in the past, who are the people who are deploying it most. So all that information is readily available here in this uh, Power BI dashboard. And you can slice dice different things to get a complete picture of uh, how your project host or pipeline host is working here and uh, uh, the complete complete uh, success, failures, solutions, owner, uh, very useful. So where's the button that you just used to visualize this view button? Yes, this is the Power That's BI integration here and you can get that information. So okay. as you see here, the deployment has succeeded. So let's go and see uh, what's there. Yep, it's telling that, hey, few few seconds ago that de got deployed. Now at this time, uh, you can go to this environment and see uh, uh, whether this application is working or not. Uh, but suppose you have validated and everything is fine, you can deploy this in the production as well right from here. So let's start the deployment to the production one. And again, it will do the validation. Validation with respect to the target one. Uh, often, most of the time, there are missing dependencies or something prerequisite has not been taken care. Those things can be caught early and meaningful suggestions are given to the maker to resolve them ahead of time. So at this time, we have started deployment to the production. One thing to keep in mind here, as as, as, as a maker, I have access here, either customizer or like a, a maker. Uh, similarly, I need to have access in my test and production environment. This deployment is happening in the context of current maker. In future, we have plans for uh, on behalf of capability as well. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this is the history here. Uh, talks about, hey, what has like really happened and uh, more detail uh, when it is started, when it completed, how much uh, time it took. If there are any failures, you will get additional context and detail. So net net, very useful here to have this capability right here. Uh, you can also jump into this environment, uh, the QA, where you have just deployed the application and you can see, uh, hey, what's there? So if you go to solution, uh, you will see, hey, event registration few minutes ago got deployed. And there is application as well, event registration that we just got. So let's play this application and see in the target QA system whether it's working fine or not. Yep, yeah, it's working. So without any, man without any manual intervention, uh, that complete deployment is done. And while we were talking about this one, the production deployment is also complete. So it's as simple. 
Yeah. And last but not least, as a pipeline administrator, you have complete view of all the artifacts which got deployed. Currently, these are all managed solution, but in future, we will support unmanaged as well. Uh, this is very useful to keep history of various things that got deployed. So who deployed, when deployed, uh, using what pipelines, in, what, in which environments, and uh, uh, that, that complete history is recorded here. Uh, I like Over the time, this can become huge, but it, it's possible to set up uh, monthly or yearly jobs which can do regular cleanup of these artifacts. Yeah, but this can be really helpful because you can download the zip file and uh, go on from there, right? Yeah, and like this dashboard will keep, give you complete uh, visibility of uh, success and failure uh, for pipeline administrators to see when something got failed, uh, how my overall performance looks like uh, for all the pipelines which are set up in the in, in, in the tenant. Okay, great. As you see, it's very simple. Yeah, let's see if we have some resources for the people to uh, to go look at the pipelines, of course. Yes, uh, we have tons of resources here. Uh, you will find a blog post with details and give some video links. Uh, you can have uh, pipelines uh, overview and various other official uh, documents. Uh, they are great resource and uh, uh, they have FAQ as well to uh, answer various questions. And uh, net, net like pipelines, it automates deployment and makes ALM very, very simple. So read our docs and go, go play with it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I, I really love the feature. It's really easy to use. And I think lots of makers will be happy with this, but also the admins and uh, the people who are like the more pro dev side of things, I think they would love this as well because it saves them tons of time. So with that, Parbat, thanks a lot for uh, showing us all these, uh, yeah, these goodies. And uh, to our viewers, uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you at the next episode of the Low Code Revolution. Yeah.